It was here, at Tali in South Australia, that Russian wheat aphid was first identified in Australia in 2016. Although the aphid might have been in the country much longer, no one knows. Originating in the former Soviet state of Georgia, the aphid first spread to South Africa and North America about 40 years ago. Since 2016, the aphids have been found throughout Australia's southeastern states and are moving north. But the big question for the grains industry is, will the Russian wheat aphid cause significant yield loss? Is it, in fact, an economic pest? So that's one of the reasons why we do these trials, to establish thresholds, to see one aphid will not do damage, what about 100, what about, I don't know, how many aphids? Um, when do we expect that we will have yield loss? In which case, the pest has to be managed by the farmer. SARI, the Research Division of Primary Industries and Regions, South Australia, with investment from the Grains Research and Development Corporation, established trial sites, and the project is now in its second year. So we've got trials going anywhere from Minipa uh, to Griffith, down to Tasmania. So we have a range of rainfall, uh, we have a range of temperature, and yeah, we hope to get good information about the regional risk of Russian wheat aphids. At each site, data on aphid movement and numbers is being collected. So we have two trials that we're running. The first one is we're looking at whether the Russian wheat aphid is migrating into the trial plots. Um, and we have treated seed with untreated seed of two varieties being Scepter and Spartacus um, to determine whether or not they are causing economic damage. Russian wheat aphids migrate into young crops in autumn. By spring, they're ready to migrate again, this time from the maturing crop to find younger plants. A pan trap is used throughout the cropping cycle to capture winged forms of the aphid. One of these actually has wing buds as well, so in its next developmental stage, it'll actually take flight. After harvest, the aphids over summer in volunteer cereals or other suitable grasses and weeds. Melbourne research facility CESA is investigating the green bridge aspect of the Russian wheat aphid thresholds project. While annual migrations of the Russian wheat aphid have been monitored by SARDI since the aphid's presence was first identified. In 2016, the field population was quite high. However, we didn't see the expected uh, flight migrations that we would expect to see. However, in 2017, we got quite high migrations, but very low field aphid populations. In 2018, we didn't see the migrations that we expected. And so far this year, we haven't seen any migrations at all. The second trial is focused on Russian wheat aphid thresholds and uses the same barley and wheat plots as well as a durum wheat and each commodity is treated three ways. One of these treatments is a seed treatment, the second treatment is a chlorpyrifos insecticide spray at growth stage 40 and the third treatment is a untreated control. And from this we hope to determine thresholds, uh, management options as well as um, the incident of uh, extreme pressure and Russian wheat aphid damage. You have to be aware that different varieties will probably have a different sensitivity to Russian wheat aphids. And even inside the wheats and inside the barleys, we strongly suspect that there are differences in susceptibility, um, as they are differently adapted to different growing conditions. So there's still a lot of unknown on varietal sensitivity to Russian wheat aphids. And we've done quite a few screenings in the greenhouse, uh, looking at symptoms and, and, and aphids, um, but only on young plants. And actually these trials are interesting because we will bring them through to the harvest and we will look at, not symptoms, symptoms is not damage. What we need to know is, is there yield loss? That's damage. Aphid counts are made every two weeks until growth stage 40, just before flowering. From that point on, Russian wheat aphids are unlikely to move into a crop. To determine thresholds, 25 tillers are selected at random from each plot. The aphids counted and the tillers left in those same plots so that we can actually state that the Russian wheat aphids have not been removed from the plot and that the same population has always been present on the plot at the same date. And then we take those numbers back to the lab where we put them onto the um, large data set and then we actually start doing some population dynamic work, looking at how the aphid numbers have built up from last week or the last fortnight as well as the symptomatic expressions, whether they have built up from built up or stabilised or gone down. 
In last year's untreated Loxton trial plots, almost 30% of tillers had aphids. In the USA, aphids on 10% of tillers or greater is considered the threshold to trigger a spray application. The reason aphid numbers were allowed to build up in the Loxton plots was so yield loss could be recorded. And according to Martin van Helden, the results were surprising. So the plants, in spite of this heavy aphid attack, were still able to grow and produce normally. The only areas where we did have yield loss were areas where there was also drought stress. The drought stress will stress the plants and that makes them more attractive to Russian wheat aphids. So they build up to higher numbers. If you then combine the two, then it's probable that you will have some yield loss. Until the threshold research is finalised, growers are urged to maintain the industry's recommended Russian wheat aphid management strategy, known as FITE. Meantime, the research has confirmed seed treatments will keep aphids off cereals during the first six weeks of growth, but questions whether the cost to treat seed is warranted. I think with the results that we get from these trials, we can now be quite confident to say in many situations there is no risk of Russian wheat aphids building up to a damaging population. So it is a potential pest, but to be a real pest it has to build up to high numbers and the situation it doesn't seem very favourable for Russian wheat aphids in the Australian climate and conditions. Go to the description bar below for the latest information, links and resources.